I got the nickname General Horn because of all of these roles that I have played where I have been the general of the army. And there have been many, Arsace, Tancredi, Orlando, Orlando Furioso, Rinaldo, and so on. That's General Horn. <laughs> and I really hadn't planned on doing that at all. It's just that I could do it, and it was comfortable. Although I was truly terrified the first time I sang Semiramide, because that's the lowest and probably the heaviest of all of these big contralto coloratura roles. That means low voice, predominant singing, low and middle voice with agility. You really have to be able to move your voice fast. Engaged, uh, or actually asked to sing Semiramide in 1964 for the first time and in order to um, find out if I could sing it we had to find a, find a score and unfortunately the only place the score existed was at the Los Angeles Public Library. Unfortunately it never got back to the library. But it turned out to be the role that really launched me into a different orbit. Very nice to meet you. Well, it's great Welcome to be back here. here after all these years, and I think it's about time, after 30 years, that I present the library with a new score of Rossini to replace uh. the one that I sort of took out of here 30 years ago. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thank we you. We appreciate having it, and great. we're going to enjoy sharing it with the public. There's the Tarantella of Rossini, even. You know, most people know this piece, but they don't know Rossini wrote it. You know, Gialla in mezzo mare, mamma mia, si saltera. <laughs> well, this one's very interesting. This is um, part of the, the Semirana. Oh, well, of course, this is especially interesting to me. Oh, there it is. Bum, 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 bum. This is the, my entrance.
Marilyn Horn raggiunge l'apice della carriera negli Stati Uniti, dove alterna le esibizioni sui palcoscenici d'opera alle apparizioni televisive, come in The Odd Couple e in Carol Burnett's Show. I think it's um, exposing an operatic diva, so as it were, to another public. And it makes, I think, perhaps it makes uh, um, opera singers seem um, a little more um, relaxed, down to earth, and maybe somebody in those millions of people that are watching television will say, well, now, listen, if, if, she, if she's in opera, maybe opera isn't so bad. Maybe I'll go hear an opera one of these days. And I, I think that's part of it, that, that enormous exposure that one has on television. She has, has been here over, over those 30 years and sustained the, 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 the performances that she has. She's not only sung um, these, these wonderful um, revivals of, of the Rossini works, but she's been a great recital singer as well. She's done very varied programs and done concerts and recitals endlessly. She's just a great artist. recitals I always have but the opportunities to perform recitals have dried up or are drying up so we some friends and I got together and decided to form the Marilyn Horn Foundation which is to try to perpetuate and increase the amount of recitals that are given in the United States and the logical time to sort of put some focus on this foundation was the 60th birthday, which fell on January 16th this year, 1994. And uh, we took Carnegie Hall, and I invited some of my most illustrious colleagues to participate in the concert. 